Today on Trying Not to Sink, we continue with the core repair in preparation for the new windlass. My name is Ed. I'm an ex-musician, turned politician, turned accountant, who now imagines himself a sea captain. This is Lynn. She's an ex-model, retired photographer, and the love of my life. Three years ago, we bought a boat. No experience and completely clueless. Since then, we have traveled over 10,000 miles along the Atlantic coast and the Bahamas. Join us as we continue the adventure, exploring exciting places, meeting new people, and having the time of our lives while trying not to sink. Before we start, let's talk a little bit about the materials I plan to use to fix the core. When it comes to replacing a core, you have several options and materials that you can use. Uh, the first being wood. In fact, this boat, the core, uh, the deck core was originally balsa wood, which is a choice of uh, many, many boats when it comes to doing decks or even uh, hull cores. You can also replace the core with marine plywood. Now, there are some advantages to using wood. Uh, mainly, it's inexpensive, and that's why most boats use it. Uh, but there are disadvantages. The disadvantage being one is that it rots. Obviously, I'm replacing some rotted balsa core. It is not impervious to water. It is not impervious to um, insect infiltration. And over time, it will disintegrate if it keeps getting wet. Another popular choice is to use a foam for the core. Uh, there are many brands. Uh, one popular one is the Vinicel. Now, there are many reasons why people choose foam as a new coring replacement for wood. The main one being it doesn't rot. It's impervious to water, uh, insects, etc. A downside is it's, it's very, very expensive. Now, another choice, and the choice I picked, is this board that we have right here, which is Kusa board. Now, right off the bat, I decided I was not going to use a wood product for the core. I did not want to have to ever do this job again, and whoever owns this boat after me, I don't want them to ever have to do it again either. I want this to last forever. So that eliminated the marine ply and the balsa. I could have went with the foam, uh, but I was worried about compression. There are a lot of bolts that are running through this area of the deck that I'm fixing. We have six bolts, carriage bolts, holding on the, uh, the anchor windlass, and then there's also the pulpit, which has two main bolts running through. And I was worried that by tightening these bolts, uh, the two pieces of fiberglass that sandwich the foam may compress a little bit as I'm tightening the bolts. I might be a little bit over concerned about that, I'm not sure, but the one thing I do know about the Kusa board is it's solid and it does not compress. Another nice feature of it is it's, it's light. This is an inch thick, and I would say this is lighter than a comparable piece of three quarter inch thick plywood. So altogether I'd say this is probably half the weight that if I had chosen to go for quarter inch plus three quarter inch plywood laminated together. So I think this is the best choice for the, the application that I'm using and I'm, I'm, I'm happy to go with it. The only downside to this, it's, it's very expensive. This piece here cost about $200 with shipping. Let's, let's talk about some of the other products that I've chosen. Now I'm going to go with a polyester resin to laminate the Kusa board in. Uh, I have two here. I have a, uh, a finishing resin and a laminating resin. The difference being that the laminating is a wax-free, the finishing has wax in it so that um, when you're using a laminating resin like this, you don't need to sand between coats. It stays sticky and then you just put another coat over it. But at the very final coat, you want it to be waxed so that it's no longer sticky when you do the final coat. Now some people um, have chosen to use epoxy as opposed to a polyester resin. Honestly, I wasn't really sure which way to go. Most of the people that I talk to or research seem to be using the polyester resin. Some people use the epoxy. They said it's a little bit stronger than the polyester resin. I don't know. I just saw enough people using this that I was confident it was going to be a good product. And I figure, well, I'm really going, um, I'm really splurging on the, the Kusa board here. And maybe I could save a little money because the polyester resin is a little bit cheaper than the, uh, than the epoxy. Uh, now, I bought a couple of other items, too, to help. I got some fiberglass cloth here that I'm going to use to repair one of the holes and probably the seams when we're done. A couple of glassing tools. I bought a whole bunch of brushes, so I don't care how many I use or throw away or whatever. Some mixing containers. Now the other product I bought was this Cavasil, which is used as a thickening agent for the resin. Uh, the reason I got that is my plan is to make a thick batch of the resin, sort of maybe a mayonnaise consistency. 
And I'm going to trowel that onto the Kusa board, sort of like you might trowel mastic onto a tile. And I plan to push the Kusa board up into the, the current deck and um, mount it up there, either clamp it or put some, uh, some pieces of wood to hold it up there tight. And then after it's dried, I plan to go around the seams and fill it in with some more of this, uh, this polyester resin. And after that, I'm going to take the skin, which I cut off, and I'm also going to do the same thing. I'm going to make a mayonnaise consistency resin. I'm going to apply it to the skin, and I'm going to press the skin up into the bottom side of the Kusa board. After that's done, I plan to go around the seam, perhaps use some of this cloth to just outline it and make sure it's nice and strong. And uh, well, that's the plan. <laughs> We're going to see how this works. I was lucky to have a reasonably warm day, so I was able to do the cutting and sanding outside. On the first batch of resin, I was worried that it would set up too quickly, so I used four drops of hardener per ounce, the lowest amount recommended. I added the cabosil a little bit at a time. This stuff is very light, and it will fly away if you pour too much of it into the resin at one time. I thought it would be a little easier to fill the borders first instead of trying to get a perfectly cut piece of Kusa board to slide in at odd angles. I coated the existing fiberglass before placing the pieces of Kusa board and then made sure to fill all the gaps with the thickened resin. I let everything harden for a couple of hours before coming back with the main board. As you can see, I needed to thin the Kusa board by about a sixteenth of an inch to match the existing core thickness. It goes quickly with a belt sander. I added more hardener for the second batch of resin since the first batch took longer to set up than I expected. I used 8 drops per ounce this time. You're breaking bad now. What's his name? Say my name. Heisenberg. Yeah. What consistency are you trying to get it to? Like mayonnaise? Okay. Applied plenty of resin to the top and sides of the board so that it would ooze out when put into place. I did not want any air gaps. Okay. Um, yes. Get 
me the smaller of the wood clamps that are backed by the ice maker. Lynn's father passed away many years ago. He was an avid boater and a woodworker. I was fortunate to inherit his woodworking tools. I'm sure he would have been happy to see his wood clamps being used on a boat again. Are you gonna sit in there and stare at it for a while? <laughs> Well, that went about as well as could be expected. Uh, it should. I had been practicing it in my mind for the past seven days, uh, but it actually it went very smoothly. Uh, we first, you know, we got the border done. Um, it took a little while to get the pieces to fit just right. Uh, we actually had a to, to uh, we had to basically plane off about a sixteenth of an inch on the Kusa board because it was a little bit thicker than the actual core in this boat. But otherwise, it went great. Uh, we have it uh, resting right now. We have the CUSA board up. It is uh, attached to the bottom of the, uh, the, the top deck fiberglass, and we're going to leave it there all week. Uh, we're, you don't need to leave it all week, but we're going uh, back to our land house tomorrow morning. So we're going to come back next weekend, and then I'm going to put the skin on, and I'll probably do a little bit of fiberglass work around the edges. I might uh, sand it down and put a, maybe just one layer or two just to attach the skin. We'll see how it goes. Until then. Until then, Roger out. Roger out.